So LEGO Star Wars has been out for 23 years now and we're coming up on the 24th year. So today I wanted to pick out my top 10 favorite years of LEGO Star Wars sets. As of now, nobody has made this video before and it was actually a really, really hard list to make. There's just been so many great years of LEGO Star Wars sets. There's also been some bad years too and that might be another video for the future. But anyways, I've narrowed it down to what I think are the top 10 best years of LEGO Star Wars sets. As always, I want to start off by putting my three honorable mentions. The first honorable mention, or you could call it number 13, is going to be 2001. Now, 2001 was a great year for LEGO Star Wars, although only 10 sets came out that year. But nevertheless, we got two very underrated UCS sets. We got the first Imperial Shuttle and the first ATST and the first TIE Fighter, although there were only 10 sets that came out this year and it was 2001, so it can't really compete with like the newer years. So that's why it didn't make the top 10. Moving on to the next one, or you could call it number 12 i'm going with 2022 now i made a video on this so you guys should totally check it out if you haven't yet now this year had a lot of sets that like everybody wanted and the sets were pretty good it's just lego didn't do them as best as they could have really the best sets are the inquisitor transport scythe and the one andor set and then a few of the dioramas the atte is good except we all know with the figures and everything and how it should have had a crab droid and all that so what i'm saying is that there was a lot of hype around this year but if you actually look at it in detail like it wasn't the best and our last honorable mention is going to 2015. Now, 2015 was a pretty decent year. Well, the first half, at least. The UCS Slave 1 came out in January 2015, which is one of the best UCS sets ever made. And we got some pretty nice Rebel sets and one of the best Episode 1 sets we've ever seen. Although, what I don't like about this year is really the second half, which is when the Force Awakens sets came out. Now, I'm not saying these sets are necessarily bad. It's just this kind of opened a gateway for like a three or four year span of just awful sequel trilogy sets. Now, this might partially be because I don't like the sequels at all but some of these sets were just downright terrible. Now moving into the official list with my number 10 spot, I'm going with 2002. This is when the first episode 2 sets came out and the massive UCS Star Destroyer. Almost every single episode 2 set that came out this year is just an absolute fan favorite, especially the Republic Gunship and the Jango Fett Slave one. Now there are a few crappy sets that came out this year though, like the A009 R2D2 and the other Darth Vader buildable figure, but if you exclude those two sets, this year was really the start of a new era for LEGO Star Wars. Although I had to put it at the number 10 spot even though there were a few great sets they just couldn't carry the weight of how many average sets came out this year all right now moving on to my number nine spot this list was just so hard to make like as i'm editing this video i'm still switching around the placements but anyways for my number nine spot i'm going with 2006 2006 was when the first starter story came out and it was when the first and only tie interceptor came out well as i'm making this video the only tie interceptor because there's a new one coming out next year we also got new rebel starfighters that year being an a wing a b wing and what i think is one of the best x wings and we can't forget the two UCS sets that came out that year, which was 10175 Darth Vader's TIE Advance and 10174 Imperial ATSD. Also, an amazing new Slave 1 came out that year, which was considered by many to be the best Slave 1 until the 2015 UCS version came out. My favorite sets that came out that year were either 6205 V-Wing or 6210 Jabba Sail Barge. I think they're both pretty underrated and just not talked about enough, and I don't really understand why. Moving on to our number 8 spot, I picked 2003. Now, this year is really carried by a handful of sets, which is the TIE Bomber, the Genos and Starfighter, the ATTE, and the ATAT. -AT. I think the ATAT -AT that came out this year is extremely underrated. It was the first ATAT -AT LEGO ever made, and no one gives it enough credit for that. The first UCS Snowspeeder also came out that year, which is a pretty good set, although the UCS Snowspeeders have never really been my favorite. My two favorite sets from this year are definitely the ATTE -AT and the TIE Bomber. I love the classic Phase 2 clones on the ATTE, -AT, and the TIE Bomber is just a fan favorite. Oh, and also a little set came out this year called 10123 Cloud City. I mean, it's only just the most sought after lego star wars had ever made with a value of over five thousand dollars and containing three of some of the most valuable lego star wars minifigures ever made with one of them being worth over three thousand dollars but you know no biggie no but actually though this is a pretty impressive set the actual build itself is kind of average but it's really the minifigures that everyone likes this set for the most famous being boba fett which was the very first lego star wars minifigure to have arm printing that's mainly why its value has skyrocketed also right now in 2022 moving in 2023 the set has gained mass attention causing its value to skyrocket but I think in the next year or two, it will drop back down to about two or three thousand dollars. Moving on to number seven, this was a pretty hard one for me, but I'm going with 2010. The 10212 UCS Imperial Shuttle came out that year, which is considered by many to be the best UCS set. Also, the Clone Wars version of the Turbo Tank came out that year, which is still the best Turbo Tank to this day. We also got a new ATAT, -AT, a new Slave One, a Clone Wars version of the Arc 170, which is a fan favorite. And my two favorite sets from this year being A087 TIE Defender and A091 Republic Swamp Speeder. Overall, this was just a great 
favorite year. I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't some of y'all's favorite year of LEGO Star Wars. I mean, again, it was so hard for me to decide these placements. So sadly, 2010 just had to end up at number seven. Moving on to our number six spot, I'm going with 2008. Now, 2008 really was the pinnacle of LEGO Star Wars. Like, it's when a new era started. The first Clone Wars sets came out, the most popular being the Republic gunship and the ATTE, and the 10188 Death Star came out, which is by far the most popular LEGO Star Wars set ever made. Also, the V19 Tour came out that year, which is one of the most underrated sets, I think. The feature on it is just insane how you just lift it up and then the wings automatically unfold. I think it's by far the coolest feature on any LEGO Star Wars set. Also, my personal favorite LEGO Star Wars set came out this year, which you guys are probably going to think is kind of weird for this being my favorite set, but it's 7671 ATAP Walker. Now, really, the main reason this set is my favorite is mainly just because of nostalgia. I remember watching that commercial as a little kid and just always wanting this set, and then I finally got it back in 2017, and it was just as great as I always expected it to be. Moving on to number five, I'm going with 2007. The reason I put this one over 2008 is just because so many classic sets came out this year, like the very first Clone Trooper Battle Pack and the very first Droid Battle Pack, and of course the 7662 Trade Federation MTT, which is still one of the highest rated LEGO Star Wars sets ever made. We also got the Jedi Starfighter set that came with the Hyperdrive Booster Ring, and then one of my favorite sets that came out this year was 7664 TIE Crawler. The main reason I like this set for much is just because it's straight from Legends. Also, I think it looks really cool and doesn't get enough attention. And of course, how could I forget the 10179 Ultimate Collector's Millennium Falcon? This held the title for the biggest LEGO Star Wars set ever made for 10 years. It's also considered by many to be one of the best UCS sets. The last set I want to talk about from this year is the Motorized Walking AT-AT. This is just such a unique set. Basically, if you don't know what it does, it has a motor in it so it walks. I really hope LEGO does something like this with a different ship in the future, but I don't really think they will. Now, these last four years were just so hard for me to decide. I had to do lots and lots of thinking and deciding, but for my number four spot, this kind of hurts me to put it only at number four, but I'm going with 2009. There were a lot of amazing sets that released this year, ranging from the Clone Wars all the way to the Return of the Jedi. This was just an all-around great year, but the one set that really carries this year, and all of you guys know what it's going to be, is 10195 Republic Dropship with ATOT Walker. Honestly, what can I even say about this? This is the biggest play set LEGO has ever made, and for 2009, this set just blew everyone away, and it still does in 2022. It's two separate builds, both of which are huge and would probably both be $100 or $150 sets on their own, and it comes with eight clone troopers. I'm just gonna be honest, this might be the best LEGO Star Wars set ever made. Like, I know I say that a lot, but this is definitely up there. It's just so elite, and ever since 2009, LEGO has never came close to making a set like this. It's a play set having 1,700 pieces and being $250 is just not heard of. And the only downside about this, which doesn't have anything to do with the set itself, is its availability today. It is hard to find anyone who even has this set for sale, and if you do find someone, you're going to be looking at paying around two to $3,000. Now, obviously, there were other great sets that came out this year, the most notable ones being the Armored Assault Tank and, of course, the Venator, which everyone knows is a fan favorite. But really, the highlight of this year is just the dropship and ATOT. Again, it was really hard for me to put this at number four, but I just think the next three years are either more iconic or they just had a lot more elite sets in 2009, as 2009 only had a few elite sets that really carried the whole year. Moving on to our number three spot, I'm going with 2013. The reason this year got put over 2009 is because it has more elite sets, the notable ones of course being the Republic Gunship, the ATTE, the Z95 Headhunter, the 501st ATRT, and the Old Republic Jedi Defender class cruiser. I think with this year, there's just not as much contrast with the elite and then the average sets like there was in 2009. There's just a lot of great filler sets, so the year is not really separated between elite sets and then good sets. Moving on to our number two spot, I'm going with 2005. Now I'm going to be straightforward with you guys. The main reason I'm putting 2005 over the other years is because of the classic phase two clone troopers, and also because it was the first year of Revenge of the Sith sets. Excluding episode three sets, we also got the Death Star 2, which is the only version of the Death Star 2 LEGO has ever made to this day. And we also got the first Sandcrawler, which I think is a pretty underrated set. Now back to talking about episode three sets, the most notable being the Turbo Tank and the Ultimate Space Battle, and also the Wookiee Catamaran, which I think is the most underrated episode three set from this year. There's not really much else to say about this year. It's just a classic year, and I know it brings back a lot of nostalgia for me and a lot of you guys too. Now moving on to our number one spot. This is probably going to surprise a lot of you, and remember, I put a lot of thinking into this, but for what I think was the best year of LEGO Star Wars, I'm going with 2014. Now before you guys start freaking out, remember that this year we got a LEGO Star Wars set from almost every movie and every TV show. It was just the most well-rounded year of LEGO Star Wars we've ever seen. We got a new Star Destroyer, a new AT-AT, one of the most popular LEGO Star Wars May the 
with many figures being Darth Raven, and we also got an updated line of Revenge of the Sith sets, including two amazing battle packs being 75035 Kashyyyk Troopers and 75036 Utapau Troopers. We also got a number of Clone Wars sets being the Coruscant Police Gunship and the AV-7 Anti-Vehicle Cannon, which to this day is a pretty sought out their set, and the Wolfpack Troopers are pretty valuable. The list for this year just goes on and on and on and on. We literally got a set from every movie and every TV show. I just think this was all around the best year of LEGO Star Wars sets. We got elite sets, we got average sets, we got small sets, we got big sets, we got UCS sets. This year just really had it all. And sadly, like I said earlier, right after this year just ironically happened to be like the valley of just bad LEGO Star Wars years. But anyways, guys, that is gonna do it for this video. Let me know what your guys' favorite year of LEGO Star Wars was in the comments below. And if you're new, please consider subscribing if you feel like it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!